Denver domination commenced as the beastly Joker, the flame-throwing Blue Arrow, two-way MPJ, an engaged Nuggets crowd from the jump, perfectly drawn up Mike Malone playsets, and a noticeable altitude advantage worked to rattle the Lake Show in Game 1. The Lakers would make a late surge on the back of Anthony Davis, but the early takeover from Nikola Jokic, who absolutely destroyed LA in the opening quarter, not coming close to being denied down low, was a first thrown punch that evidently had LeBron and company second guessing themselves. As the purple and gold would rush into their offense and show clear signs of uncomfortability amidst the altitude, the free-flowing Nuggets offense featuring advanced off-ball movement, screening, and general execution couldn't help but be respected whether you're a Denver fan or not. The scary part about this if you're a Laker fan, they got a great game from AD, who seemed to be robbing the narrative down the stretch. Rui Hachimura was outstanding, Braun started finding his rhythm in the early fourth quarter, but even before that, when they were down double digits, this was a game where it felt like LA played pretty well. A buzzer-beating step-back 30-foot bomb from Nikola Jokic had AD impressed. The stage presence and Curry-esque three-point stroke from Jamal Murray had LeBron impressed, and the lengthy wingspan and mental fortitude from Michael Porter Jr. allowed him to swat AR-15 on one end and shoot over the top of him on the other. While switching Rui onto Jokic in the fourth quarter, allowing AD to be a safety was a solid late-game adjustment for LA. For the most part, the Nugs have certifiably captured the flow after nothing less than a back-breaking statement of a Game 1 win. Stay tuned for everything you need to know as both coaches make adjustments heading into Game 2. Right quick, just 13.1% of you watching are subscribed, so please subscribe. Follow at DFlowHoops on Instagram and Twitter for a follow back, and splash thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. Any bit of support is greatly appreciated. Back to the content. The opening 12 minutes saw the Sombor Serbian shuffling phenom Nikola Jokic display more than merely his finesse and feel for the game, two qualities which he's made a name off of, but it was Jokic's presence on the offensive glass, his pristine footwork and strength in the post, and generally his physicality that was utterly controlling the personality of this one. After one quarter, the man who was robbed of a third consecutive MVP trophy had 12 rebounds by himself six offensive boards and six defensive boards to be exact, while the Lakers as a team had just six boards on either end after the opening frame total. More on how Jokic benefited off Malone's advanced playbook is coming up, but shifting to the backcourt, and with the Laker guards content to go under screens, Jamal Murray quite literally could not miss, as my fellow Ontario native and the Kitchener-born killer and the product of Kentucky was a purely locked-in man on a mission from the get-go, proving to the entire world, including yours truly, that he's the real deal and is ready for prime time. Meanwhile, for the team, as many of you know, I've attempted to write the script for since the trade deadline in the Lakers, they now have their backs up against the wall completely, as a duel between LA's number one ranked playoff defense versus Denver's number one ranked playoff offense, saw the Nuggets play their style of basketball, all while dominating the backboards. The Mile High saw their team secure five quick offensive rebounds less than four minutes into the game. Their team and crowd vibes displayed a sense of classiness, urgency, togetherness, but more notably a merciless edge to prove to everyone at home watching that they were the real deal. Before evaluating the playsets which fueled Murray and Jokic to combine for 75 points on a ridiculous and undeniably terrifying from an LA fan's perspective 89.6% true shooting mark, as the drastically overused saying goes, role players play better at home, and Malone got seriously impactful production from his glue guys in addition to that one-two punch, Bruce Brown Jr. was exposing D'Angelo Russell in isolations and Bruce's speed, strength, and explosiveness gave the Lake Show massive issues. Brown Jr., in addition to another junior in Michael Porter, fused together with Contavious Caldwell Pope, who had a 21-piece, to be definitive luxuries to help out this team's top two bucket-getters in Jamal and Nicola, as BBJ, MPJ, and KCP provided an extra 52 points on top of the damage the Nugs' 1-2 punch had already inflicted. Aaron Gordon also chipped in 13 points, and while AG's spacing may be an issue in the dunker spot, which allows LA to bring an extra help defender, 
The Nuggets can easily adjust to that by having Gordon space out the floor as a free off-ball screener out on the perimeter. But speaking of the Nuggets' advanced motion, Malone's offense features a deep playbook with the actions they run being decisive, fluid, and evidently polished. Touching down in the film room, this Denver playset was spammed early and often, and it's called Angle 45 Chicago. Jokic is always the DHO man, MPJ in this case sets the flare for Murray to receive the DHO, which branches into an angled pick and roll, with MPJ popping, getting the kick out for Murray, and shooting over Reeves. Malone goes right back to that angle 45 Chicago action to get Murray his first bucket of the night, getting him a wide open catch and shoot triple. Here, Denver runs the angle 45 action with Contavious in the same spot that Murray just was, except they mix it up with Contavious ghosting a screen for MPJ. Instead of MPJ setting the entry flare like he did on the possessions we just looked at for Murray, The Lakers can't be phased by the altitude as much as they seem like they were in Game 2, as Jokic pushes the tempo after grabbing the board, and Aaron Gordon simply outsprints Davis and James before catching the Jokic bouncer and finishing the fast break. Again, the Lakers both don't communicate and hustle back, as after another grab-and-go from Joker, Gordon muscles his way downhill for the poster. Flex Thunder action, has Jokic set the cross for MPJ, Jokic faked the pop, while MPJ cuts to the paint to fake the on-ball, and after Murray had dished it off to Gordon, he goes to set the pin down for Jokic, who gets the wide-open elbow jumper. Simple spread ball screen with Murray and Gordon displays the Lakers sagging off for a third straight possession in this film room, as Austin's been collapsed by the action, and Bruce Brown's just 28% three-point stroke shocks the late closeout from Reeves. If LA is going to have any chance at winning this series, their coaching staff will not only need to remind them of the little things like getting back in transition and putting a body on Jokic, but the film room guys need to spend an endless amount of time breaking down each one of the go-to playsets the Nuggets like to run, whether it's to get Jokic isolated on the block, to get Murray clean handoffs, or all the varieties of pistol action that Denver is running to freeze the Laker defense. Collectively, if the Lakers don't lock in on memorizing and shutting down the Nuggets playbook, this will be a gentleman's sweep for Denver. With guys like Devo, Reeves, and Schroeder looking like they evidently have no idea what's going on during a handful of possessions where Murray was receiving handoffs from Jokic, that Nuggets gentleman's sweep doesn't seem like the most unrealistic thing. With that said, the Lakers started this game flat and would later on make matchup adjustments, specifically with Rui taking on Jokic and bringing help defense with AD and company, with Gordon clogging things up in the dunker spot. However, an easy adjustment that Malone will likely make to counter that is taking Gordon out of the dunker spot and making him an off-ball screener out on the perimeter to help the spacing. The Nuggets' off-ball motion, however, mixed with their attention to detail in terms of knowing and executing their playsets to perfection, their willingness to trust Malone's offense at all costs, consistently broke down a Laker team that, again, played pretty damn well themselves. I mean, if you're Darvin Ham, you got a staggering 89 points from LeBron, AD, and Reeves, your team shot 46% from deep, 55% from the field, outshot Denver 26-22 with the foul line, and still ultimately were outclassed. Yes, momentum swung down the stretch, and if a few clutch triples go down from Braun, things could be a completely different story, but LA just seemed rattled by the mental fortitude and general confidence portrayed in both the aura and playbook from these powerhouse, number one seeded Nuggets, a team that's potentially bound for their first franchise championship. It is utterly insane how Jokic wasn't MVP this year, and looking back on it, it's even more disrespectful that this was the man, as Mark Jackson mentioned on the air, was the last one picked at this year's All-Star Draft. Mark Jackson, of course, was the man who didn't even have him on the ballot for MVP, but with how Nikola performed on one of the biggest stages there is in Game 1, he's putting everyone on both his personal bandwagon and this Nuggets bandwagon. Denver sent a message in the opening game of these West Finals, and that is, they need to be taken seriously, and then some, if any team will have the slightest chance at beating them four times out of seven. They're deep, top-heavy, well-led, well-coached, and they have floor spacers and energy guys 1 through 15. That's about everything you can ask for in the modern NBA. More so than anything they're equipped with, 
It's the never get too high, never get too low mantra of this Malone coach team that's really eye-popping, not to mention intimidating for opponents.